I don't think I could ever forget the intro to Hell Lovers 2. Not even if I tried. Super Earth, our home. Prosperity, liberty. Hi there. <laughs> Democracy, our way of life. Oh, hello. But freedom doesn't come free. <laughs> no! Sweet liberty! No! Starting a game with a public service announcement is a bold choice, but this game legitimately recruits you into playing it. <laughs> Look familiar? Scenes like these are happening all over the galaxy right now. You could be next. That is, unless you make the most important decision of your life. I truly have never played a game where its entire personality stems from satire while simultaneously making me feel so incredibly passionate about that satire that I will dedicate hours of my life towards it. Prove to yourself that you have the strength and the courage to be From the get-go, this game tells you exactly what it is going to be about. Spreading democracy. Sweet liberty! You will get to see new worlds, explore the far reaches of the galaxy, and make your nation proud. And although this recruitment strategy has proven effective, considering how many people are talking about and playing this game, a core piece of its identity isn't being talked about nearly enough. It motivates you to run into bullet storms to almost certainly die. It packs more of a punch than an orbital laser ever will. It's that beautiful, sexy, and sweet sound of democracy. The soundtrack of Helldivers 2 is designed to be intense. After you have been successfully recruited into this game, you are met with the classic tutorial level that most games have. But rather than giving you a slow drone of music to go through the sequence, it instead gives you a cinematic soundtrack to learn this game's rules. Not only this, but it uses its patriotic motifs throughout the entirety of this tutorial level coercing you into the musical sound of patriotism without even realizing it. Simulator. That's right, the real deal. While General Brash, the greatest soldier to ever serve, guides you through this death trap of a tutorial level, the music laces this danger with a patriotic enthusiasm. If you listen to the character of the music, it is no wonder how it achieves this. The rise and fall of the strings, hits from the brass, and militaristic drums create scale for this game. I think it's gone. Oh my, oh my god. Good lord. And create a rising tension throughout the level. These themes are going to be consistent throughout the game, and you are going to experience them in the most horrifying moments. What? How did he run like that? What the fuck is going on? To be honest, I couldn't tell you if this garnering of patriotism was a conscious or subconscious effect, but I know for certain that the music of this game had something to do with it. So this raises a difficult question, how do you make something sound like democracy? To answer that, we need to visit a galaxy far, far away.
This is Wilbert Rodgett II, a composer within the video game and film industry that has made a living creating atmosphere, mood, and tension through his impeccable music composition abilities. After receiving a BA in music at Yale, his first work would be with LucasArts as a staff composer. This would be where he worked on a multitude of Star Wars projects, including Star Wars The Old Republic. A couple years later, Rodgett became a freelance composer, working with numerous studios on titles such as Mortal Kombat 11, Star Wars Vader Immortal, and Destiny 2 Forsaken. He was perfecting his craft, and working individually allowed him to express his ideas even more. And from this, something was starting to emerge in his compositional sound. You see, as a composer, it is common to have musical characteristics make their way into your music. Hans Zimmer uses a lot of electronics in his incredible scores. Gustav Mahler was obsessed with manpower and orchestras, and Beethoven consistently stretched musical forms to his will. Patterns are bound to show up one way or another within these beautiful works of music and their authors. Wilbert Rodgett II is no exception, because his emerging sound was a combination of his inspiration and his work environment. It was in your face, familiar, and inspired by his previous compositional history. His emerging sound was that of democracy. This theme sounds familiar, doesn't it? When I first heard it, I thought it was from Helldivers 2. It sounds like a battle between good and evil, a tension rising that is so cinematic in quality and coded with dissonance. I mean, just listen to any of the pieces of music that play while you fight for your life in Malevolent Creek and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This piece of music would fit right in while you mow down the hordes of terminants running at you. However, this piece was composed over eight years ago. This is the title sequence for Call of Duty World War II, composed by our friend Wilbert Rodgett II. It tells you everything this game is going to be about, putting your life on the line to protect what matters most. And although Call of Duty doesn't say it straight to your face nearly as much, you know what you're dying for. Democracy. So let us use this as a perfect example for what democracy sounds like and how Rajat uses that to get you hyped for this game. First, you need a chugging string line underneath your main melody. You need it to rise in tension, to express this fear of the unknown, this fear of… not democracy. Perhaps you have a trumpet solo, a call of militaristic valor, and you let the piece continue to grow continue to change and mold itself to create this impeccable arrival of your main theme, your main theme of democracy. The drums and snares are pushing your theme forward, while the brass take the center stage, projecting a powerful sound, a force to be reckoned with. It is a musical effect that you're familiar with, and it has been used to symbolize the superhero, the victor of the battle, the unstoppable main character, and god damn does it work. Oh, there's a lot here. It'd be a shame if someone were to blow up the entire thing. Yeah, so don't do that. I... yep, I won't. It is pretty obvious to see the similarities between Call of Duty World War II and Helldivers 2. One is just a bit more satirical than the other. But what distinguishes the music of Helldivers 2 from being just a satirical jab at democracy is how it takes itself seriously just enough to create a sense of patriotism within the player. The game itself is fantastic, and there are a million videos on the internet explaining why its game mechanics are incredible. The game's story is laughably simple, and this is the realm that doesn't have to be that serious. You can see this from the beginning cutscene when you open the game. The game's priority is you having a good time, 
not becoming incredibly attached to characters. There's a sense of comedy here, and it's hilarious, where there is no individualism and everything you do is for a weird overreaching government. Glory to Super Earth, I'm sorry, please don't. I'm not a traitor, please, I swear. At this point, you might think that this game isn't going to take itself seriously at all. And then the music starts playing. It is over the top, it is sometimes corny, and it is stupidly dramatic, but it is thoroughly composed to make you feel like you're the hero. And that is all that it takes. Stop pressing it. Why can't I get off this ground? <laughs> Get me off! I can't get off! Yeah. Help me, Dude, me oh, neither! Yeah, someone <laughs> punched me! Someone hit me! I can't move! Reinforcing! Get, get me in! Punch me, please! I can't. You're just stuck. I so oh, I threw grenades! <laughs> Why did you throw grenades? <laughs> It would be one thing if this game recruited you into playing it simply through dramatic musical moments and over-the-top cutscenes. But this thorough composition isn't just for the flashy moments. I am not kidding when I say that every aspect of this game was meticulously crafted with a musical score that encapsulates the feelings of the player. A formula is created for the player with music heading into the match, both consciously and subconsciously raising the stakes as you get closer to having your own boots on the ground. The galactic war map, the hub for what makes this game so unique, has a low ringing tune in the background that might at first sound like background music, but evolves into that familiar democratic sound. The selection screen for drop points and stratagems takes this theme and increases its intensity, continuing the process of hype before you load into the match. It's as if the music is giving you time to be strategic but pushing you forward just enough to act quickly and not miss a single moment in the game. And it caps this intensity off with the main theme, likely the tune stuck in your head that made you click on this video. It does so many things right, conveying to you everything this game is about while your hellpod burns towards the planet's atmosphere. The scenery is massive in scale, you can see fellow helldivers dropping in the distance, the sound of liberty is ringing in your ears. And it is at this point that I realize all this music that happens is during cutscenes or planning phases. We haven't even gotten to the music that plays when you're actually in the match and your bullets are flying through the air. Joining the oh, there's an invisible rock here. That's why. Oh, I fell. <laughs> the charger is still just stuck. I'll it's save you, Ethan! Throw up in. Nothing? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> there are multiple songs that play while you are fighting for your life on the planet's surface. When calling in reinforcements, there are two soundtracks that can play when one of your comrades inevitably dies. I did! Also, I'm stuck in the building next to the hell bomb, so I'm gonna die. Oh. Two, one, boom. Oh dead. my god! And these musical tracks also build an intensity just like their counterparts. There are musical cues associated with everything, from calling in other stratagems to terminated outbreaks to massive robots trying to kill you. I think it is amazing how there is a different music associated with the automatons and terminids, providing you different emotional connections to the enemies. This has me incredibly excited for the future of the game, where we might possibly get new music with new species being added. As the match continues, these different themes create an emotional roller coaster. It feels like everywhere you go, there is a new theme playing. The extraction music is blaring, oh, cheesy, and perfect I for the moment. I call my balls, Betty and Jerry. It's the music! Uh, it's the music! Somehow, this theme often ends up being stuck in my head more than the main theme, and I swear it's because of that goofy rhythm that it starts off with. But as much as I have dissed this song, it's still so badass. It just keeps progressing, 
getting more and more intense while you fight tooth and nail to get the hell out of there. This is what spreading democracy sounds like, and I wouldn't want it any other way. With all of this talk about how amazing the music in this game is, it. it wouldn't be fair to not mention how it dramatizes the moments without music. When most of the game you have these heroic themes blasting in your ears, it is all the more sobering when there is no sound at all. When it is only the wind blowing by you and your footsteps thudding towards the next point of interest. It is often a subconscious effect one that allows you to catch your breath from whatever horrors you and your team just experienced. Some of my favorite moments in this game have ironically stemmed from this absence of music. My absolute favorite is taking in the beautiful scenery, the planets looming overhead with nothing but ambiance surrounding you. And meanwhile, your friend is fighting for their life against three bile titans and reenacting their own demon. God damn, that looks so pretty. Oh, that's a 500. Holy shit. <laughs> It may not jump out at you like the other musical moments do, but these moments of silence are incredibly important for the game's tension and atmosphere. If it were constantly throwing things in your face, the epic moments would become dull. This is why, from a game creation standpoint, it is required that you pay just as much attention to the quiet moments along with the chaotic. Oh my, oh my god! god. Dude, what, the fuck? <laughs> what the hell happened over there? I have found myself playing Helldivers more and more over the last couple weeks. As school's gotten more crazy, I've been begging for more time to play this game. I love it so much that I actively schedule it into my day, eagerly trying to find the next opportunity to play with friends. I've had so many memorable moments, from desperately waiting for the dropship to land to getting obliterated by my own sentries. I've watched a number of YouTube videos discussing the impact this game will have on the future of the industry and how it will change the way we play games forever. I agree with these points to a certain extent, but what I don't understand is how people aren't discussing the music nearly enough. From what I have previously explained, the atmosphere and intensity of Helldivers is reliant on its soundtrack. Those moments of me waiting for the ship wouldn't be nearly as intense if it weren't for that stupid theme playing over and over. Those late night conversations with friends wouldn't be nearly as impactful if it weren't for that low hum of music aboard the ship. The patriotic love every player has for Super Earth wouldn't exist without the incredible main theme of this game. I have no idea how long this game will stay popular for, it really is too difficult to tell. But I am taking in every moment of anarchy while I still can. I already feel nostalgic for this game, and I have only been playing it for a month. Sci-fi games like Helldivers were how I first got into video games in the first place. I grew up playing through the Halo games religiously, futuristic shooters that changed the scene of multiplayer games forever. The music of that franchise alone keeps me coming back, even when the recent titles have been lackluster. Sweet and I think that is another reason why Helldivers 2 is succeeding seemingly out of nowhere. For years, a massive community of people has been starved of quality multiplayer sci-fi shooters. It felt like every opportunity a studio had to bring the community back together, they just failed miserably. I am happy to say that we finally got the game we've been asking for for over a decade. It might have its glitches and its corniness, but Helldivers 2 is everything I've wanted in a shooter game since I was a kid. Like I said, I don't think I could ever forget my experience playing Helldivers 2. Not even if I tried. I've died countless times for its cause, stayed up late into the night spreading its motives, and now created an entire video essay about it. This game is something special, and it makes me happy just how many people are seeing that. But don't take what this game achieves for granted. Take a minute to appreciate that beautiful music serenading your conquest for peace Holy and prosperity. Shit. The next time you're fighting horrifying creatures and watching your friend explode next to you, 
take a moment to enjoy that beautiful ringing of liberty in your ears. That mesmerizing sound of bullets hitting the floor. You went straight into hell, and you found what matters most. That beautiful, sexy, and sweet sound of democracy.